Hello and welcome to First Talk with Violet Gonda. This evening we will discuss the ongoing dispute over the election of mayors between ZANU PF and MDCT with ZANU PF's Paul Mangwana, the lawyer representing the MDCT and constitutional law expert Professor Lavmo Maduku. The ZANU PF led government has ordered that mayors and chairpersons of municipal and rural councils must be elected members of the councils. This directive follows the nomination by the MDCT of individuals who are not elected members of the councils in Harare and Bulawayo for the position of mayor. The MDCT has filed an urgent application in the Electoral Court to compel local government minister Ignatius Chombo, uh, who is also the Minister of Rural and Urban Development, to allow non councillors to be elected mayors. My first guest is MDCT lawyer Tendai Toti. So let me go straight into it. First of all, Mr. Toto, can you tell us what uh, the issue is exactly? Um, you've, you have uh, filed a court application regarding the issue of um, the election of the mayors. What exactly is happening? What happened is that uh, we, we, we filed an application in the electoral court. Yes. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go on. Yes, we, we, we filed an application in the electoral court on an urgent basis. And uh, seeking, okay, sorry, seeking an interdict. Seeking an interdict against uh, the Minister of Local Government and uh, Local Government Rural and Urban Development. What what is your from, argument exactly? Yes, from implementing the decision that he made to the following effect: that uh, mayors can only be elected by councillors from amongst the elected councillors, and not any other person. And what's your client's position on this? The, the, the client uh, suggestion is that um, anybody who has been um, nominated by the political party consent and recommended by the political party consent, his name, his or her name can be submitted for purposes of consideration for election by those councillors as mayor. <laughs> What does the law actually say about this issue? The law, in, in, in respect of the Constitution, it says that um, the, in terms of Section uh, 265 of the Constitution, it states that uh, all members of council shall be in fact, it, it actually uses the word uh, all members of council must be elected. That is to, that may include mayors, right? Does it say that you, may include we, we mayors? Have, yes, that may include mayors, right? But you, you, you have to realize that uh, we are looking at... Uh, executive mayors and non-executive mayors. So in this case, we are dealing with a non-executive mayor who can be elected by the councillors, but not him not being a councillor, as it were. But um, you, the ZANU PF says the law, the new constitution is very clear, and even um, constitutional law expert uh, Dr. Um, Professor Lav Momaduku says that uh, the law is very clear about this. You have to choose a mayor uh, from the elected councillors. From the elected councillors. That's, that's, the, that's the interpretation of... Uh, of uh, ZANU PF and that's the interpretation of uh, Dr. Maduko as well. But uh, my clients argue that um, it, the, it does not exclude persons 
who has not been elected as councillor. But where in the constitution does it actually say that? Does it actually stipulate that it can right. be um, a, a person who has not been elected? Right. What what is happening is that uh, if you if you look at section two six five two of the uh, of the constitution as read with the urban council act, it makes a provision for any other person to be voted as to be voted by the councillors as mayor. Doesn't the new constitution uh, remove that provision from the that's in the urban councils um, act? The, urban, the provision of the urban councils act has not been. Uh, the, the, the amendment that is available has not amended that specific section in the Urban Councils Act. So section 265 must be read together with the unamended provision in the Urban Councils Act. That's the argument of the, of the applicant. If, if there's so much uh, confusion uh, surround this, this issue, why can't the MDC just go ahead and choose um, uh, uh, you know, a representative or a mayor from the elected councillors because it's not like, uh, as Dr. Love Momaduku has said, it's not like you don't, the MDC does not have qualified um, or people who are capable to be mayors who have yeah. already been uh, elected that one, as yeah, councillors. That, that, on, on that aspect, uh, I would actually reserve my comment. Uh, I want to reserve my comment or, or purely on, 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 on a question of um, legal ethics. Uh, I would not want to express an opinion which is contrary to my client's instruction. Okay. And also, uh, since you're taking this uh, uh, issue and you're representing your clients, is there any mention from your clients about uh, the doctoring of the, you know, a clause in the Constitution regarding the, um, you know, election of mayors? Because some MDC officials I've spoken to have said that um, Zano PF has removed, um, I think they said, um, a critical clause 272 subsection 9 which provided that an act of parliament would deal with the election of uh, mayors from the met metropolitan provinces is there any mention of this in your application uh, apparently not yes. apparently not because uh, the, the constitution that um, that i refer to is no that subsection 9 subject i mean 272 subsection 9 so your clients are not even talking about that in the application? They are not. But are you aware of this issue that um, that important uh, clause was removed that would have dealt with this issue in a more uh, clearer manner? Yeah. In a, in, in a, in a way, I, I, I would respond that I would respond quickly as follows. Um, if the, that specific provision is not there, it is, it is a provision which is not a, a provision in the Constitution. And therefore, it, 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 it will be nice for anybody to refer to a, to a clause which is not in the, in the Constitution. Hmm. So how hopeful are you as, uh, you know, the lawyer uh, representing the MDC that the court is going to deal with this manner in, uh, you know, that, that they, they will rule in your favor on this issue? Yeah, there they, 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 they must be a clear distinction as, as, as to the... Uh, process and procedures to elect a non-executive mayor in terms of 2652 uh, and the process uh, provided for in the same constitution is to the election of um, an executive mayor. So the court must make a pronunciation to, to the following effect, that uh, the two provisions, section 222742 and section 2652 refer to either a may, a, a, an executive mayor or a non-executive mayor, and there is no conflict. So we must get a pronouncement to that effect. And when is this uh, matter going to be heard? Uh, we've uh, uh, filed the application. Uh, apparently, we had filed the application in the electoral court. The electoral court said there is no jurisdiction, and I have instructions to file the same application in the high court for determination on um, on those critical issues, and for for the court to make an uh, to make a determination on those critical issues and to grant or reject the relief sought by the applicant. Okay. No. Thank you very much. It, it is only when it is only when the court makes a pronouncement on uh, on those critical aspects that uh, everyone must be satisfied that uh, the law is this or the interpretation of the constitution is this. 
So do you know when that will be heard in the high in, in the high court? I'm sure I'm sure next week by by mid next week Wednesday. Uh, well, we are hopeful that by mid next week Wednesday, the matter may be may be may be in court for consideration. You're watching First Talk with uh, Violet Gonda and our topic this evening is the wrangle between ZANU-PF and the MDCT over the election of mayors in the metropolitan provinces. My next guest is Paul Mangwana, who was the ZANU-PF COPAC co-chairman. Uh, Mr. Mangwana, so first of all, can you tell us what is your position as ZANU-PF regarding this issue of the mayors of the metropolitan provinces? Well, I, I must start by saying that when a matter is pending before the court, you want to allow the court to make a, a decision. But our position is unfair with that uh, this application is mischievous. It's very clear in, the, in reading the new constitution that the intention of uh, parliament and the people of Zimbabwe is that any person who occupies a position in a local authority must have been elected by the people. That's very clear. So you cannot have an unelected person uh, heading uh, councillors who have been elected by the people. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's against all democratic principles. So for the MDC to insist that it was mayors who are head picked by their party who have not been elected by the people to head the council is undemocratic and unconstitutional. That is our position. Anyway, we believe that the courts are going to agree with us. I've just been talking to the lawyer representing the MDC, and uh, he's adamant that the law is very clear that uh, you can have an executive mayor and also a non-executive mayor, and that uh, the councillors can actually choose um, a mayor that was not elected by the people. What can you say I, about that? I respect Mr. Monzora very well as a lawyer, but I think his reasoning more politically than legally. The new any law in this country must conform to the provisions of the new constitution. He's trying to rely on the Urban Council Act, which has not been made to conform with the new constitution. So any provision of any law which is inconsistent with the provisions of the constitution is invalid to the extent of that inconsistency. So if there are provisions in the Urban Council Act which allow the uh, mayors to be elected from non-elected people, those provisions are against the new provisions of the new constitution. Therefore, they remain invalid to the extent of their inconsistency with the new constitution. And what is surprising me is that uh, Mr. Monzora was my colleague. We crafted the constitution together. The imperatives behind the, the clauses were discussed, and we agreed that anyone who is to, to represent people of Zimbabwe in any elected body must have been elected by the people. That is the essence of democracy. And I find it very strange that for political expediency is now running away from what we had agreed in COPAC. Um, just uh, to correct you, the person I interviewed is uh, Tendai Toto, the lawyer representing the MDC team. Yes, but the senior partner is Honorable Monzora. That's why the firm handling the matter is Monzora in Associates. And I expect my colleague to give proper legal guidance to his uh, subordinates in the firm. Now, Mr. Mangwana, since you were one of the COPAC co-chairs, can you help us understand this issue? I was talking to some uh, officials in the MDC, and uh, they allege that there's a critical clause that was in the original or the final draft uh, constitution um, that has now been removed in the constitution that was gazetted. And they allege that um, ZANU-PF has removed that clause. And uh, it's 272, uh, section 9, which said that an act of parliament would deal with the election of uh, the mayors from the metropolitan provinces. What can you say about this? No, actually there is a clause which is in the new constitution which says the NATO parliament uh, may uh, deal with the, the question of um, executive mayor. That is there. And um, the, the very same act now, the new constitution, was a bill which was debated in parliament and nobody changed anything. They know that very well. They could have raised it during the time the bill was being debated in parliament. I think they are being dishonest. 
So this uh, act of parliament issue that you've said uh, is actually there, can that be used by the NDC uh, to say, you know, they can uh, go ahead and, um, you know, have the councillors elect and ask the parliament to, to, to deal with no, this issue? No act of parliament which has been created to allow for the existence of executive mayors. So you have to read the old Urban Council Act together with the Constitution to get the proper legal guidance. But like I, I've indicated that Section 2, I think it's 272, uh, subsection 2 of the new Constitution stipulates clearly that members of local authorities shall be elected directly by the people. So you can then, uh, and a mayor is a member of a local authority. Therefore, any, a mayor who has not been elected directly by the people does not qualify to be a member of uh, a local authority. That's very clear in the Constitution. And if there are any provisions of the Urban Council Act which are not in line with that provision of the new Constitution, those provisions are invalid and remain invalid even if they are black and white in the Urban in the, in the, in the, in the Council Act. When you say um, the mayor shall be elected by, uh, directly by uh, registered voters, can um, councillors who are also registered voters, can they go ahead and elect a mayor of their choice since they're also registered voters? Councillors elect a mayor. There's from one of them, that person occupies the position of mayor after having been elected as a councillor directed by the people. So you can't have a person who has not been elected by the people being elected by a small se segment of a population. You can't. So don't you think uh, you would, uh, you know, this situation could have been resolved um, if uh, the mayor was elected by the people from the beginning and not by the councillors themselves because the councillors are just going to elect someone who is only representing uh, one uh, small ward in, no, in, the, in the city. With councillors electing their own chairperson, whom we call a mayor. A mayor is basically a chairperson of councillors. And also electing other office bearers like us. Uh, uh, the chairman of the finance committee, the chairman of the planning committee, and all other office bearers. You can't have all those people elected directly by the people. But the person to be elected must have come into, into the council through an election by the people. That is why we are, we are arguing that only an elected councillor can also be elected by other councillors to become mayor. Yes, and I'm saying, would it not have been easier to just have the people elect the mayor and not to have councillors just picking from this small pool? You want to have a mayor uh, elected directly by the people. That's up to the government of the day to decide. We, as you know, in Zimbabwe, we used to have what we call the executive mayors who were elected directly by the people. That scenario was in existence, but was removed along the way. We can still go back to it if the policymakers so decide. And what is the situation in the other provinces? How are the mayors elected? They are elected by the councillors, just like the chairperson of Rotis Council. But um, in the other eight provinces, do the mayors have to be from the pool that was elected, or you can, or they can uh, choose from outside a council? It must be from the pool of elected councillors. Okay, so what do you, how, what's your response in terms of uh, what the MDC is charging that uh, ZANU PF is just politicizing this and wanting to control how they should operate in the you know MDC led councils? ZANU PF is simply being very democratic. It, it, you can't have a person head picked by a leadership of a party, then it trusts as the most important position in the council to head that council. That is undemocratic. That is dictatorship. Thank you very much. Ms. The NDC wants to change its name to the Movement for Dictatorial Changes. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul Mangwana, for talking to us on the program First Talk.
is the constitution silent on specifics regarding the election of mayors and therefore becomes subject to interpretation. In this last segment, I speak to constitutional lawyer Professor Lavmo Maduku about this and other issues. So, first of all, Professor Maduku, can you give us your take on this uh, uh, conflict between Zonal PF and MDCT over the election of mayors? Uh, what is your understanding of the law regarding this issue? Well, I think the law is very clear. It's not even an understanding where you would say I, we want to hear the opinion of Professor Maduko and so forth. It's actually mischief for those who say that the law is not clear. Section 265, subsection 2 of the new constitution says that all members of local authorities must be uh, elected by registered voters in their respective areas. Uh, if you... Uh, to be a member, a member is a councillor, a mayor, anyone who is going to be able to be there and exercise authority must be elected by registered voters. So that is quite clear. Uh, you cannot become a mayor unless you have been uh, elected somewhat. And there's an indirect election there. You elect councillors and all members of um, the local authorities who have to be councillors. What a councillor may also be a mayor in the sense of either chairing the that's the idea. What, so it's clear that you cannot be a mayor unless you are a councillor. But are, when you become a mayor, you still remain a councillor. Like you have in the United Kingdom, for you to be the prime minister of that country, you must be a member of parliament. So even if you are Prime Minister David Cameron, you are still a member of parliament for your respective constituents. This is the system which is there, which is... Uh, in, 265 is this the same system uh, you know in the other provinces the other eight uh, provinces do they elect their mayors or chairpersons uh, in this way or it's different that's a deliberate confusion you should not even raise it the mayor of Harare has nothing to do with the province of Harare the metropolitan province of Harare includes Kitungwiza, Rua and so forth only Bulawayo, uh, only in Bulawayo do we have a province that has the same boundaries as the city. So you have the mayor of Harare, you have the mayor of Chungweza, you have the chairperson of the rural local board, you you have um, airports, whatever. Now all those people constitute the Harare metropolitan province, which in terms of the constitution is chaired by the mayor of Harare. That's what they say. But in the other provinces, you, you 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 are aware that in the other provinces you have so many towns, you might have so many towns, you have rural district um, councils and so forth. So what they do is that on their, their first meeting, they elect not a mayor, but a chairperson of the province, who is then, you give a name, the, the party that is the majority uh, MPs will give the, the people sitting there two names from which to uh, elect a, a chairperson. So those are two different levels of government. The provincial council and the local authority are two different things. So the provincial council can a actually elect uh, a mayor from outside the council? That is not correct. There is no mayor for provincial council. Or chairperson. So provincial councils have a chairperson. Mm. So when the mayor of Harare chairs the Harare Metropolitan council. He or she will not be the mayor. He or she will be the chairperson of the metropolitan council. But he's chairperson by virtue of being a mayor. He's only called the mayor when he goes back to the Harare City Council. But when he's in the metropolitan council, he or she is the chairperson. So, uh, but on the issue of how they elect um, this chairperson in uh, Harare and Blawayo, why can't the councillors, as also registered voters, why can they not elect their own mayor? Uh, well, you, you, you are outside. mixing things there. You are mixing things. The mm. council, it is, it is because of the constitution that the, chair, the mayor of Harare is chairperson. The constitution specifically says that the chairperson of the Harare Metropolitan Province shall be the mayor of Harare. 
as the chairperson of the Blauwe Metropolitan Council, shall be the mayor of Blauwe. Mm. And then it is the same constitution then that says for other provinces, you will elect a chairperson. So the question must not be posed to anyone. It is what the constitution says. You must ask those gentlemen who were presiding over COPAC and coming up with those inconsistent provisions. But that's what is now there. Yes, the but, but I'm, I'm going back to what you said earlier on that uh, the the councillors are elected by registered voters. And yes. I'm also assuming that the councillors are registered voters themselves. So if they are also registered voters, why can they not also be allowed to choose a, a mayor? Uh, that's not a legal point. It doesn't make sense what you're saying. Once you become a councillor, you are a councillor, you are not a registered voter for purposes of that work that you are doing. Now, you can't say that uh, a group of councillors are what is meant by registered voters. You will have to go to a legal argument which says, the constitution says you must be elected by registered voters. What is a registered voter? A registered voter is a person who is registered as such. It does not mean an office holder who happens to be registered voter. You would then be so ridiculous as to allow the president to start uh, nominating or electing people because the president in this capacity as, a, as an ordinary Zimbabwean is a registered voter. President Mugabe, is, there is a registered voter called Robert Gabriel Mugabe. If you go to the uh, constituent voters' role in high school. But that person, when they become the president, they are president and they cannot then claim to be a registered voter at the same time for that purpose. So, but uh, Dr. Maduku, this whole thing, do you think it would have been made easier if uh, they, the constitution had said um, even the mayor, when it comes to the mayor of Harare or Blawayo, it's the people who should elect uh, that mayor? Because uh, as it is, I, Zanu PF is saying the councillors, the elected councillors should choose um, who should choose a mayor from from the councillors that have been elected? But some of these councillors were all of these councillors were actually elected in their wards and not specifically elected by you know all people in Harare, for example. It's just a certain section, a ward, an individual ward that would have elected an individual councillor. So why should they then just choose from? you know, that pool of uh, people who are just uh, elected from in individual wards. Why can't the whole of Harare, for example, vote for a mayor? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I understand what you're saying, and it makes a lot of sense. That is what should have happened. It would have made a lot of sense. But unfortunately, the Constitution doesn't say that. And also, unfortunately, that this is a Constitution that was brought uh, into being by people that said they were respecting the views of the people. If people had specifically had their attention drawn to that point, I have no doubt that Zimbabweans would have preferred a situation where they would elect their mayors directly. Mm. They never got that opportunity. You go to a constitution in post. But more seriously now, you get people that were part of the constitution making process trying to play games with the whole country by bringing in different um, uh, meanings mm. to clauses that uh, are quite clear. So I agree with you, it would have been much better if uh, things had been um, done uh, uh, by providing for direct election of mayors. Now, I was talking to some MDC officials and they didn't want to go on uh, the record about this particular issue. But uh, they are alleging that uh, ZANU-PF and uh, Minister Patrick Namasa in particular uh, doctored the... Um, the, 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 the constitution that was actually gazetted and that the one that was signed by all the parties had um, a critical clause uh, 272 subsection 9 and uh, I understand that clause provided that an act of parliament would uh, deal with the, um, with the election of mayors for the metropolitan um, provinces. What do you make of this? First, that is nonsense. Secondly, it's also a surprise that it is coming now. Where were they when those things were being doctored? These are the persons that uh, allowed this constitution not just to pass in parliament, but it went through a referendum. You remember that uh, this constitution was gazetted exactly the way it is now. It was gazetted, and then the president called a referendum on the basis of a particular document. 
every page of the so-called COPAC draft had three signatures. We have up to now, I mean, every Zimbabwe knows, they, the COPAC draft that was circulated, the 90-something thousand copies that were circulated, had three signatures on every page. But, so what did they mean but by have that you noticed, kind of doctor? But have you noticed, Dr. Maduku, that um, the draft that was, the final draft that was signed by all three uh, political parties had that uh, 272 no, no, section 9? No, no, it doesn't have that. It doesn't have that. Did you check? Yeah, I mean, I know. I mean, I know that there's nothing in this document which is separate from what we had. Because I mean, these are politicians that are being irresponsible. They should take responsibility for their things. They wrote a constitution. They didn't understand what they were putting into a constitution. Now it's coming back to haunt them. And then the best thing that they do is to say, no, 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 someone cheated. When are we ever going to hear them taking responsibility for the mistakes that they've made? Hmm. And so, but. How could the MDC, if we were to go with uh, your argument and the reasons that you've given, how could they have gotten it so wrong then to actually think that um, the councillors can appoint an, a mayor from outside, um, you know, the elected council, um, because the constitution says, says so according to the MDC? How could they be getting it so wrong? Well, I think that uh, the answer is known by people who know what the person surrounding Morgan Sangre are like. They are very casual people. Uh, they don't do their work thoroughly. The same uh, casual approach which uh, led to their losing an election is the same casual approach that they employ when they are doing serious matters. I have no doubt that no one would have even taken notice of those kind of things or when they took notice, they would not have been so thorough in their analysis. So don't even uh, create a hypothesis or a long story. These are incompetent people, incompetent in the sense that they don't take their work seriously. I mean, even as we speak today, I am aware that Ndaibit was still arguing that uh, after having been shown that expression, he still thought that it meant something entirely different, that uh, even with Section 265, Subsection 2, uh, you could still go around... Um, and say that uh, a mayor can come from outside country. Or I, I think I read somewhere where um, uh, Dr. Magaisa was uh, trying to make an argument that uh, all those are academic, completely out of uh, this world arguments, which never make sense in the real world of politics and so forth. Because take it, take it from common sense. When you have a, a, a legal dispute relating to the meaning of a legal expression, you'll have to go to the court. The courts currently are made up of uh, lawyers that would be very sympathetic to Zanu uh, Also, thanks to the MDC that never suggested an overhaul of the judiciary. Then even if you were to have excellent legal arguments, at the end, uh, Chief Justice Gossip would have to have the final say, and you know what he would say. So, I mean, that, that's all these things. The MDC must not be... Uh, be uh, what is this? You must not never overestimate its, uh, its capacity. It's made up of people that uh, live on protest uh, politics. So how people will vote for us and so forth and so on. That's what the kind of people you have there. How do you respond to people, other observers, who um, say that uh, the new constitution is uh, silent on uh, specifics regarding the elections of um, of these mayors, and therefore it becomes a subject to interpretation, and that uh, this is then the MDC's interpretation of, of the law. I think it's, they don't know what is meant by silent. We, we, in law, we do use the expression that the, the constitution is silent or the act of parliament is silent. It is not used in this particular case. It is not silent. It is very clear. All members of local authorities must be elected by registered voters. That is clear enough. And there's no law that says you must have a mayor. You might have a chairperson. You might have the provisions on mayors are not standalone provisions. What you have first and foremost is a council, a local authority. That's all. And the local authority is made up of uh, the councillors that have been elected by the people. Whether those councillors decide to have one of their own as chairperson or whatever, that's a different matter altogether. So it's not silent on that point. So do you think the court is just going to throw out the MDC application? It would not even be entertained. The one that I understand has been taken to the electoral court. The electoral court has no jurisdiction to deal with matters 
uh, uh, raising the interpretation of the Constitution. They will have to go to the Constitutional Court. I actually understand that they have already been told. I think that uh, Monsoor had gone to the Electoral Court. His action might have been thrown out, if that is one you are referring to. So if you were to advise the MDC on this particular issue, what would you tell them? I would advise them very clearly. They must identify one among their councillors, the very good people that have been supporting their party for ages, the people that fought in the council elections to be elected as councillors, they have been elected, they have won elections. There would be some person who is suitable among them to be a mayor. That person would become a mayor, they would train them, they would keep encouraging them, guiding them and so on. They should not overestimate. What do you think is the difference between Obed Gutu and the other people that were elected? He, he is completely not very different. You can't mystify Obed Gutu. I mean, you cannot go to town and destroy all chances because you have a difference between Obed Gutu, who is not an elected councillor. And a number of those guys, I'm sure there are people in the, among the councillors in Harare who would have the capacity even better than that. They should just be political and respect their own people that have won election. Get one among them to be a councillor, I mean to be a mayor. If you go to Bulawayo, they have 29 councillors. And they cannot be telling the world that out of those 29 councillors, they have no one who could even be anywhere near the lecturer from uh, NAST that they've identified as a, as a possible mayor. Mm -hmm. Or you go to Chitungwiza, you say that uh, out of those councillors elected for the MDC, there's no one who is better than Manyemba that they have identified. It, it's completely that's an attempt that Shanghai wants to have personal control over these things, which is contrary to what we want to build in the country. And just speaking generally about this uh, new constitution, uh, Professor Madugu, has it heralded anything new in your view? Not at all. I mean, at least now you are debating the issue of mayors. The new constitution is confused about it. The old law was even clearer, but now we have a new constitution that is confused about that. Take the fact that the president has not even appointed a cabinet as we sit. Elections were held on 31 July uh, with over a month. There's nothing in the new constitution to compel the president to name a cabinet and so forth. We, so everything is dependent on the president. The convening of parliament, which has already taken place when they were going to take us when the parliament is going to be open, that was again dependent on the president and so forth. Uh, you see also the size of uh, uh, parliament, very big. That is something new that you can talk about. So essentially, the governance culture in the country has not changed. Mm. But what, why do you think the president is taking so long to announce the cabinet, especially when he was the one who pushed for an early election and he was saying he doesn't want to govern by decree? So what is it? What is happening here in your view? Well, I think it's very clear. This is the person that we have had as our leader for the past 33 years. He's, he's oh, as usual, taking issues, uh, taking time to do it. Just an arrogant president, as you know him to be. He wanted an election just to get absolute power. That's why he was pushing for an election. He was not pushing for an election because he wanted to do things differently. He was just pushing for an election to get back to the old absolute control of the state. And so he's busy enjoying that. That's what he's doing now. So he's taking too long, not because there's anything difficult, because eventually when he announces his cabinet, it will be the same old defenses that you will see around moving from one post to the other. So you will say, well, why take so long to come up with something that doesn't look very different from previous cabinet? But, but what we see is... Sorry, but there are, I, I know you said that uh, there's nothing difficult in, in, in terms of appointing uh, you know, new ministers, but uh, some critics are saying that uh, having tasted the GNU with, um, with, the, with the MDC formations, um, the president now has a you know, tough job ahead of him in terms of looking for, for people who are qualified uh, for some of these positions like the finance ministry, um, and so forth. So do you think this could be the, the, the issue that um, he's failing to really find the right people for the job? Ah, no, 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 no. That's quite strange. That's a very strange view, <laughs> that one. Very strange view. Uh, you, you want to suggest that there are very competent people in the inclusive government, so that Mugabe um, is looking around for uh, equally competent people. Not at all. I mean, if you look at the, he has so many people to choose from. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you have yes, doctors, medical doctors there, yes, lawyers, yes. It's simply the, what we've told them, just love for absolute, absolute control.
so I take my time, no one can force me, and so on. I don't think that is the reason. Mugabe has always appointed people normally sometimes competent in terms of technical capacity. Remember that cabinet in 2000, Jonathan Moyo, Simba Makoni, Kosana Moyo, and so on. So there's nothing new in guy getting competent, certainly technically qualified people. And I think he's, he, he might have problems in the person which is working uh, is, as you know, quite a person who's old and they won't be able to get uh, work as fast as... Uh, have you ever watched the president signing anything? I mean, we saw him signing the constitution. Mm. Just about three papers. I think it took close to an hour. And then uh, sometimes I watch him at university when he comes for graduation. To sign his visitor's book takes ages. So even in trying to complete his list of ministers, it will also take time. It but will, doesn't he get time. help? Is, 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 it's not like he's going to come up with all these names on his own. Surely he has advisors and people around him who can, who can help him decide. Yeah, so, so that's why you should then stick with my original point that this is just someone enjoying power. Hmm. That's what it means. If he has advisors, so I'm sure he has a list already. So why not working on the list? And Dr. Maduku, just on this issue of, um, I know you said it's, uh, it's nonsense that the MDCT is now saying that it's on a PF uh, doctored uh, some uh, sections, um, you know, in the constitution, especially to do with the issue of the election of the mayor. Let's say if they are indeed um, right on this issue, is there anything that they can do now that the constitution has been, um, is now the law of the country can it be changed can parliament amend some of these uh, clauses is 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 it is there anything that can be done about this if uh, they have problems with it uh, legally no legally they will have to have an amendment in parliament or even a correction that to be go to go through parliament which as you know is two thirds majority of zanu mm -hmm. they'll have to get the agreement of zanu politically of course yes they have to go out in the public tell everyone that this is what happened we are hearing it from you. Let's hear it more and more. Let them tell their rallies, meetings in rural areas, in urban areas, that in fact uh, this is not the constitution that should have uh, passed. Let the public then develop a clear attitude that this is not the, the constitution that we want as a country. So politically, less of opportunities. They must tell everyone. Uh, and, and they must explain why that happened. I'm sure we'll support them if they start telling us that... Uh, there are a number of clauses, but they will not just rely on the mayor's clause. They must tell us other clauses that they may not be in agreement with. It okay. doesn't make sense to say, no, we're only cheated on the mayor, but uh, we still support the constitution that is so much power for the president. It doesn't make sense. And that's all for today's edition of First Talk with Violet Gonda. Thank you to our guest, Professor Lavmo Maduku. And before him, we heard from MDCT lawyer Tendai Toti and Paul Mangwana, who was the ZANU PF COPAC co chairman. Thank you, our viewers, for watching First Talk with Violet Gonda. Good night.